Hey there, honey badgers, Jonathan Levy, and stick around because in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what drives Bitcoin's price. Oh. Hey there, honey badgers, Jonathan Levy here, Bitcoin for the masses. And in today's video, I want to talk about the price of Bitcoin. It's up, it's down, it's sideways, it's all over the place. And there is a lot of stress and energy and attention put into the price of Bitcoin. The media is constantly covering it. All kinds of YouTube videos are covering it. So what's the deal? What actually drives the price of Bitcoin? Well, in order to understand that, you have to understand a couple things about Bitcoin. First and foremost, you have to understand that nobody controls Bitcoin. Unlike Apple stock or Tesla stock, nobody is actually in control of Bitcoin, which means that the news affects it, but only in the sense that it affects people's psychology, their doubts, their fears, or what we Bitcoin maximalists call FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. You see, unlike that Apple or Tesla stock, the CEO of Bitcoin can't make a mistake or get caught up in a scandal or get caught laundering funds or anything like that because there is no CEO of Bitcoin. There is not even a leader of Bitcoin, unlike so many other blockchains like Cardano, Ethereum, or whatever. So once we understand that, we have to ask ourselves, well, what really affects the price of Bitcoin? You see, Bitcoin is traded on an open market or many, many open markets all over the world called cryptocurrency exchanges. These exchanges set their price based on supply and demand. How many people want to sell and how many people want to buy? And that creates a market by intersecting the potential sellers and potential buyers. Now, because all of these marketplaces are relatively liquid and you can move funds between them, there may be some small arbitrage opportunities between them, but for the most part, the price of Bitcoin is pretty fluid all over the world, unless there are some kind of limitations preventing people from transacting in another one. That is to say that if I see an opportunity, I can take my Bitcoin from an American exchange and transfer it to an Indian or Chinese exchange and trade there. And that allows for kind of smoothing out the price all over the world. If you don't believe me, you can look on coinmarketcap.com and see all the different exchanges and see that the prices are for the most part pretty standardized across the way and pretty synced up. But there is a lot more to understanding's Bitcoin price in the big picture than just supply and demand, although that is the most significant contributor to the price. You see, Bitcoin's supply as a whole is not completely fixed, at least not yet. Sometime around the year 2140, there will be a fixed limitation of 21 million Bitcoins, but we haven't reached 2140 yet. And that means that new Bitcoins are still being issued every single time a block is found. On average, that happens every 10 minutes. Originally, the Bitcoin block reward or the reward that the miners get for solving a block of transactions was 50 Bitcoins. I know a lot of Bitcoin every 10 minutes. That block reward halves approximately every four years and has already done so a number of times. So at first, there were 50 Bitcoins per block and then 25 and then 12 and a half. And now in this current era, the miners are getting 6.25 Bitcoins for every block solved. That equates, if I'm not mistaken, to about 900 new Bitcoins a day. Don't quote me on the math, but that is an important factor to consider. You see, the supply of Bitcoin is ultimately determined by how much of it is being issued. Not only how many people are willing to sell it, but how much of it is being issued every single day. In effect, that's sort of our inflation rate, and you can think about it as Bitcoin's inflation rate being a little bit above 1%, or lower than gold. Now, how exactly does this affect the price of Bitcoin? Well, a couple different ways. One, the more Bitcoin is put onto the market or created, the more it sort of dilutes the rest of the Bitcoin in the entirety of the blockchain. This is inflation, and although it's a low percentage of inflation, it does reduce the potential price of Bitcoin. But in addition to that, you have to understand and remember that the miners have to pay real costs 
to mine Bitcoin. They're paying for electricity, rent, equipment, and probably paying a certain amount for human resources and staffing. They have real costs and not all of those real costs are payable in Bitcoin, which is how they earn. Ultimately, what then happens is depending on the current price of Bitcoin, they have to sell a relative amount of that Bitcoin in order to cover their electricity bills, rent or whatever else. So in a weird kind of confusing way, the higher the price of Bitcoin goes, the lower amount is going to be put on the market from the miners, while simultaneously more and more people who bought low are going to want to sell high. Now, these opposing forces meet together in exchanges, whether decentralized exchanges or centralized exchanges, and together dictate the price of Bitcoin. So to review, Bitcoin's price, unlike your dollars, euros, yen, or any other fiat currency, are not dictated by any central authority or any kind of central planning. There's nobody out there who's actually tweaking the knobs, adjusting interest rates, or adjusting the ability and the flow of Bitcoin coming out in order to change or alter the price. Instead, Bitcoin is regulated by the market and market forces. If more of us decide we want Bitcoin, as has happened over the last nine years, the price of Bitcoin is going to go up. If people somehow decide, whether it be through media fear or misinformation or governments passing laws and regulations, that we don't want Bitcoin, well, first off, I'll buy your Bitcoin. But second off, the price will inevitably go down. So now that you understand how the price of Bitcoin is determined and what actually moves that price, what do you think? Is the price going to go up, down, or does it not even matter? Ultimately, many of us believe that Bitcoin is going to become a unit of account and is going to become a currency all its own. It's kind of like that joke from The Matrix where Neo asks a question and Morpheus replies with, no Neo, I'm telling you that when the time comes, you won't have to. In that way, the answer to the question, how many dollars will you get for your Bitcoin, could in fact be, in 10 years, it's not going to matter how many dollars you could get for your Bitcoin. Thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed, please make sure to subscribe. I'm putting out all kinds of new content to help educate and train the latest generation of honey badgers. And I would love your suggestions in the comments below.